Currently, she focuses on developing, organizing, and facilitating job embedded professional learning opportunities for teachers, teams, buildings, and also at the district level. And we will also hear this evening from Ms. Denise Brown, who is the PYP coordinator at Onaway. She's been at Onaway for 30 years and she is married to Mr. Sean Brown. They have three children and two have graduated from Shaker schools. Uh, and they have a daughter who is a sophomore currently at the high school. So again, it's an amazing panel. We're really looking forward to hearing from each of them this evening uh, for what's going to be a great presentation. So John, take it away. Thanks, Mr. Florence. Folks, we are so excited to be here with you. Thanks to the PTO for inviting us. Um, we have a brief presentation for you that really is going to paint the picture of the district in broad strokes. We're kind of approaching this almost as a bird's eye view, if you will. And to that end, we're each going to speak to our relative area of expertise at the primary years, the middle years, and ultimately at the high school. Once we've kind of uh, discussed some of the main curricular ideas in each of those sections, we'll open up the floor to any questions that you might have. We just ask that while we have a lot of experience, we are no, or by no means experts, but certainly if there's a thought or a question you might have that we can't answer, uh, we'd be happy to follow up with that. In fact, Mr. Florence is taking all questions you might have uh, at the end of the meeting. You can email him uh, directly. So thank you, Mr. Florence. Um, I'm going to actually hand it over to uh, Kristen Clark as I load up our presentation. And uh, she can, well, I guess we already had our bio, Kristen, so I guess I won't put you on the spot again. Uh, but if you give me just one moment, I'll kick us off and then hand it over to Kristen, who will get us started with the PYP. As we thought about uh, this request to talk about pathways throughout the Shaker curriculum, uh, we kind of conceived it as uh, how we used to see pathways and, and really our more current or modern philosophy of the pathways. And on the left side, you'll see these trees sort of straight and narrow. This was kind of our old outdated idea behind pathways, which meant where, where a young person started in their elementary school, it was a straight shot all the way up through the high school where they first then got to start to branch out a little bit. It's also a powerful image insofar as you'll notice that each of these trees stands alone, isolated, following its very own path uh, separate. That's how we used to uh, conceive of pathways oftentimes in education in general and in, and in some extent in Shaker as well. However, in the last several years, particularly this past year, we've paid special attention to really thinking about what that pathway throughout the Shaker experience looks like, which brings us to the analogy of the tree on the right. You'll notice on this image, you'll see these powerful roots spread out, but coming together to be really as one in a solid trunk built on a foundation of very many different roots. You'll see a little bit higher on the tree where these start to branch out into all of these beautiful branches with the leaves branching out in their own way, grasping at the sun and being beautiful. This is how we conceive of it now. Starting out as these many different diverse experiences at the elementary school, building an exceptionally strong foundation for the future, growing vertical up as that trunk before eventually branching out again to pursue lots of different opportunities at the high school. That's the analogy and the philosophy that is going to sort of guide tonight's discussion a little bit as we talk about experiences at each of our levels. Thinking about this succinctly, while many folks idolize what's happening at the high school and they see all of the amazing programs, I have to hand it to our elementary and middle school colleagues, because while a tree's beauty lies in its branches, and oftentimes that's where we see a lot of accolades, the strength is in the roots. And I have to really give tremendous credit to our elementary colleagues in particular, who worked tirelessly to build that solid foundation for the rest of the, high era of the Shaker experience, the full K-12 continuum. 
With those compliments in mind, I'd love to turn it over to Denise and Kristen to talk us a little bit through what the PK4 experience looks like, and then we'll go beyond as we go to middle and high. So thank you, Kristen and Denise. All right, thank you so much, John. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so the IB Primary Years Program, and I'm gonna ask for forgiveness because I am going to read for, from some notes. This is truly my bedtime, so I'm running on fumes right now. <laughs> Exhibition takes it out of you this time of year. Um, so the IB Primary Years Program is an inquiry-based curriculum framework um, that builds conceptual understanding. In Shaker, the PYP goes from pre-K through fourth grade. Um, in the PYP, we believe that students should be agents and partners in the learning process. So there are a number of benefits um, to having um, inquiry-based learning, um, and this is not an exhaustive um, list, but the um, inquiry-based learning in the PYP nurtures student passions and talents, empowers voice and choice, fosters curiosity and a love for learning, um, teaches grit, perseverance, um, growth mindset, and it empowers students to solve the problems um, of tomorrow. So um, in the PYP, we have transdisciplinary learning across all subjects. So our units of inquiry will include science and or social studies, language arts, math where it fits. Um, if math doesn't directly fit, then we connect the math um, standards through the key concepts. Um, in the single subjects, uh, which includes Spanish, PE, or physical education, music, art, and library. Uh, students participate in inquiry-based learning engagements um, in those classes as well. Um, there are many opportunities um, for exploration in our single subject classes. Um, in years past, uh, the PYP coordinators um, worked with primarily third and fourth grade students. Um, moving forward, the PYP coordinators will be working with all students um, kindergarten through fourth grade. Um, and during that time, the students will experience um, even more inquiry-based, IB-aligned and rich learning engagements, um, including thinking routines. There is also a development of the design cycle um, or design thinking. Um, that we usually accomplish that through our STEM or STEAM um, activities or challenges. Um, and then there's um, exhibition, which is why I'm so exhausted right now. Um, exhibition um, is the culmination of the skills that all the learning that the kids have done um, from kindergarten or pre-K in, in some cases. Um, through, through fourth grade. So what they do is um, apply their research skills, self-management skills, social skills, thinking skills, communication skills. They choose a topic that they're passionate about. They research it, uh, find a primary resource so that they can ask a lot of questions. They present their learning to the wider community. Um, and then finally they take action. And in action, that's, that's where it all lies. That's, the, that's our ultimate goal is to um, have our students become agents for change. Kristen? Okay. So I get the honor to share a few examples of how the PYP or the Primary Years Program leads to action, critical thinking, collaboration, and an authentic connection to the world around us. So I'm gonna first start off with sharing a, a story about a little girl who had a big idea and a first grade teacher who facilitated some really deep learning around this idea. So this teacher was teaching a unit called How We Express Ourselves. And the students were exploring how we express them, how, we, how they express themselves through action. And during the unit, a student expressed her desire to have ice cream trucks in Shaker Heights. And I'm not sure if you know this, but um, Shaker or ice cream trucks have been outlawed in Shaker Heights for quite some time. And so the teacher decided to incorporate opinion writing and action throughout this unit. And it all sparked from this student's idea. 
So she, the student led this inquiry and the, the teacher facilitated the process and they started having a class discussion. So you can kind of see on this slide, the yes and no. So the, the teacher kind of facilitated why should Shaker have ice cream trucks or why should Shaker not have ice cream trucks? And from that discussion, she went through the structure of opinion writing and she taught how we um, start writing or how we write opinions. Um, and so that through that exercise, the students decided whether or not they were going to sign the petition. So they had to pick a side. They had to decide if they were for or against ice cream trucks in Shaker Heights. And um, at the time, the first grade students didn't know what a petition was. And this particular student who started this inquiry taught her class that petitions are the beginning of taking an action toward change and educating people about an action. And so throughout this process, she got a lot of signatures. The petition was posted outside of the classroom and she got, I mean, she gained a lot of signatures from her class, but also the school community. And she was able to put together a, a slideshow and met with Mayor Weiss and presented her slideshow. And then she was able to present her, um, her reasons for ice cream trucks in Shaker Heights to a city council at a city council meeting. And the first grade class was able to attend that city council meeting virtually and firsthand saw the voting take place that eventually approved ice cream trucks in Shaker Heights. And this was sparked from a first grade student, which is absolutely incredible. And it was, it was exactly what the unit called for, which is how students, no matter how young or how old you are, how you can spark change through action. So the next example I'm gonna share, if you wanna to go to the next slide, John, is um, a third grade architecture unit. And the students explored the elements of architecture, the earth's resources and natural disasters. And throughout this unit, they studied and researched design and um, they even built a prototype of a building that would withstand an earthquake. And we partnered with eighth grade students at the middle school and during their earthquake unit because they were learning about the ins and outs of earthquakes at a deeper level. And so our third graders consulted the eighth grade experts on elements of designs that they needed to consider in order to build a structure that would withhold, withstand an earthquake. And so they evaluated their structures, they tested materials. I mean, we're talking toothpicks, marshmallows, gummy bears, gummy worms. Students had some really creative requests. And I think Denise can actually attest to it because she bought it all for us. <laughs> Um, but anyways, the students designed these structures and they consulted these eighth grade students, their eighth grade experts, um, through Google Meet, and this was actually before the pandemic, and then they tested their structures in a jello earthquake and reflected and, and decided what they would do different. And Earlier, you heard Denise talk about the design cycle and this what this particular activity and this particular um, unit was all about the design cycle. And it's all about trying, evaluating, testing, reflecting, and really that critical thinking and collaboration piece. So I hope tonight that these examples show you how the primary years program fosters critical thinking, authentic problem solving, student voice and choice, and a well-rounded approach to learning at an IB school. Thanks, Kristen. I appreciate um, getting to do the transition, especially with the last project. I know that was really popular um, with the eighth grade uh, students as well, getting an opportunity to uh, you know, act as teachers and, and provide a lesson and feedback um, to the elementary students. Uh, one of the things that I was tasked with is, you know, telling a little bit about that transition uh, from 
the uh, pre-K through four, obviously into Woodbury and the middle school. Um, I spend my time between both buildings. I'm gonna share a little bit about the transition in the IB framework. And one of the first things um, that will be a little bit different as you shift from transdisciplinary uh, work into subject group where you're going to have each subject group working on a variety of units that are concept based. Uh, for example, um, if you um, take a look at our fifth grade science, one of their recent units was called um, Move It, Move It. And it, behind that idea was, you know, forces in motion and looking at those state standards um, through all different types of movements and activities. Um, right now, our fifth grade Lang and Literature teachers, which is an English class, we use that terminology of Lang and Lit. Um, they're working on um, a unit that is called Everyone Has a Story to Tell, and that has an underlying piece about immigration um, from historically historic terms as well as modern day. So the transition is a little bit more subject based. Um, so that gives you a little bit of an idea as they have a variety of teachers. Then we just expand on that framework. One of the things that really stood out from what Denise and Kristen was sharing was about that the importance of the collaborative, the inquiry, critical thinking, uh, that we want our students to continue to grow from that foundation um, that Dr. Moore spoke about at the beginning. One thing that um, is new to many of the students is they had an opportunity to take uh, maybe Mandarin or Spanish, depending on their year um, at the elementary. We have a carousel now that has a, a multiple languages that students get to take as a special. So they get exposed to German and French, uh, Latin, et cetera. And that's been an awesome opportunity to get experience in other languages. Um, as they go to sixth grade, they have a chance to choose that language uh, that they will study grades six through 10. The design class reminds me a lot of um, obviously the STEM work um, that is happening um, at the elementaries. We have two design teachers that work with our students in the fifth and sixth grade, and they go through that design cycle of inquiry and developing their ideas. Uh, creating solutions and evaluating those solutions. Uh, this goes through um, this design class. They'll take fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth um, with a variety of units and opportunities. And then as students come to Woodbury, they will have a chance to not only experience the visual arts, um, we have um, an amazing art staff that also includes our band and orchestra teachers. And every student gets an opportunity to participate in band and orchestra. Um, so one of the things that I also will say is we uh, have choir that we add in during the seventh and eighth grade years. So obviously I think Chicker is well known for its academics as well as its arts. And I think that's a pretty amazing thing um, and I can say that I've been here over 20 years and I'm very, very proud of those things and to be a part of them with our staff um, and with our students. When you, you can go ahead, yep, John, you're on the right page. Uh, we look at services action, service being an important part. We just um, heard um, Kristen talk about the ice cream truck. I love that story. That's just like amazing. Um, and I know there are so many more as well. Uh, we have that you may or may not be familiar with, but at Woodbury, they do Woodbury Creating Change. Uh, this is a big focus that comes from uh, the art department of Deanna Clemente Milne and Robert Wagner, uh, but they get everybody involved. They get the teachers involved, the administration staff, the secretaries, everybody gets involved uh, with the students on finding a uh, something they're going to change. And this year they worked on um, working towards an outdoor space uh, that'll eventually come our way. Um, it's been a little harder this year, obviously, with all of everything going on in the pandemic, but they continued through on that. During uh, eighth grade year, students get to work on groups again. Every, um, that's called the Community Project. And we have had some amazing opportunities to work with our eighth grade students. All eighth grade students get to participate in that, working in small groups of um, two to three, so they might pair up or do a small group 
We've seen amazing service projects like the one that's in this picture to the right, which is uh, student literacy. This was um, a group that worked on um, literacy at the younger grades and then having some opportunities that they took to the elementaries. We've had groups work on a lot with um, food banks, shelters, as well as one that we got to do as we ended right um, when uh, COVID started. It's a year ago, obviously, that um, we had a group of ladies work on what to do with flowers before they're, um, they're not quite up in their time, but somebody might get rid of them, but worked on making arrangements and getting them to um, various elderly uh, members of the community that could enjoy them. So it was really a unique project. So those are some of the projects. Um, I feel like I'm talking a little fast, but I want to make sure I give an opportunity um, to Dr. Moore to talk about MYP at the grades nine and 10, as well as the DP program. Thanks, Addie. Uh, before we shift over to ninth grade, we did want to take a quick stop and talk specifically about something that's new for our Shaker learners starting this year and moving forward. Um, beginning this year, all of our eighth graders were actually getting to experience Algebra One. Uh, historically, depending on the Woodbury experience, an eighth grader might be in just eighth grade math, for example, or Algebra One. But the importance of this decision becomes immediately apparent in the picture that you see here. The main driver of making sure that all of our young people are ready and successful in Algebra One in eighth grade is you'll see as the pathway continues down through a 12th, the world of math is now open for all of our young people. Whereas if you were not in eighth grade Algebra One, you may not have access to some of these really enriching math classes later on in your high school career. We wanted to take a break here just to show you that up until this point, the Shaker experience is a rich experience for all of our learners. And it really begins in the eighth to ninth grade shift where you start to see some choices. Particularly here, you'll see the example of math. After that eighth grade year, uh, in which case, if a young person were to struggle in Algebra One, there is a supplemental math workshop to make sure that that eighth grade foundation of Algebra One is strong. From there, we begin to introduce some choices. You'll notice if a young person continues on in the geometry experience, they'll go through, they can do Algebra Two in their 10th grade and continue on into some incredibly enriching uh, experiences in 11th to 12th, including IB classes, AP classes, even some college opportunities through College Credit Plus. Should a young person really be passionate about math and have mastered that Algebra One content, there is another opportunity there to focus on the math through our math honors continuum. And should a young person choose to go through there, they still have AP and IB options, uh, but they tend to be at that higher level. Uh, just so you know, you'll notice all the way bottom right, AP Calculus BC, gosh darn, that's, that's Calculus 2. A young person could go on to college and begin at Calculus 3. So you can start to see how having Algebra 1 in eighth grade opens up these opportunities for all of our young people and gives them a true variety of choice in that 11th and 12th grade year. Now, You'll notice because there are two levels of these, it can feel somewhat constrictive. We oftentimes get the question, can my child change their pathway once they've begun? And the answer is yes. And the way that we think about this is sort of like on and off ramps. It is certainly easier to start in nine math honors and 10 math honors and say to yourself, gosh, you know, I might not want to major in math or physics or calculus and whatnot, but I want to get a really enriching math experience. Still, we would encourage that young person to perhaps take an IB math or a statistics class and so on and so forth. They have that full range of access to those classes in 11th and 12th grade. 
it's a little <laughs> harder to level up, but we do have many young people who will take some summertime right, experiences through College okay. Credit Plus or maybe something at Tri-C or Summer Bridges. Okay. And that's going to help like them have video. access to some of those higher level math classes like the BC AP Calculus. We decided to highlight this because this is really the earliest point in that Shaker experience where that choice in ninth grade could determine some of your future decisions. Remember, we're moving up that tree. Kristen and Denise told you about how we're gonna build that strong foundation. Addie's coming in to tell us about how we're expanding those opportunities and strengthening those learning skills. Now in the transition from eighth to ninth grade, we're starting to branch out. Math is one of those examples. Let's take a look briefly uh, at the ninth and 10th grade, which is the culmination of our middle years program. Addie, would you like to tell us about ninth or 10th grade or would you like for me to do that? Before we go on to that, may I interrupt mm -hmm. just for a minute, Dr. Moore? Of course. So, um, I did wanna interject in this space before we go on to high school that this year's incoming seventh graders, there is a new opportunity that now as they leave the middle school, our seventh and eighth grade students, all of them have the opportunity to earn two high school credits in language prior to going to the high school as well. So I think in the addition of, of all of these opportunities for our students, I just also wanted you to know that that's a new, that's a new thing this year. And so it's very exciting. So I did wanna also add that to the discussion as well. Thank you. Mickey, I'm so glad you added that because I would defy you to find another school where a young person can graduate with fluency at the Chinese six or seven or Spanish six or seven. This is something truly remarkable out Shaker. And Mickey, it's because of the work of our middle school colleagues. You're absolutely right. Thank you yeah, for our adding whole, that. Our whole world language um, team uh, from the high school through the middle school and in the elementary, they've just done a wonderful job of rounding out and making our program even more robust. And to the point, I saw Ms. Klein's statement about the carousel. So for the district putting that carousel in, we, it's interesting because just today we were looking at choices and um, language selections, and it has really changed the way students are choosing their language. Um, and that exposure, I think, is just really critical. So it's been a really neat thing. So I just wanted to give a Kudos to our language department um, and our Maybe department chair is Kimberly Ponce de Leon. So I just Actually, I wanted to thank them for the work. His, his language before he goes into middle school that he's going to study for middle school through senior. Isn't that crazy? It's exciting. So go ahead, Addie and John. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. Addie, would you like to talk uh, about our MYP or do you want to shift over to me? Sure, I can share a little bit and then I'll have you Wonderful. expand from there. Molly Miles is our coordinator at the high school. Her, um, we work hand in hand, uh, making sure the program from grades five through 10 is you know, working together. So it's been a wonderful opportunity. Uh, this evening, she's actually busy teaching a class that we have called Asian Studies um, with Andrew Glazier, who's a INS or Individuals in Society or Social Studies teacher. Um, so she wasn't with us tonight, but she is busy with our students working um, on that classwork. In the uh, MYP years for nine and 10, you'll see that, you know, it expands, especially with opportunities that we have for the arts. PE and design, uh, being able to take a class like the Shaker Eye class where you're writing um, in a journalism manner, I will say, in a variety of ways, you know, originally starting out as that paper piece and growing in multiple other uh, technology ways, jewelry making, theater, weightlifting, yoga, the engineering, pre-engineering classes, just a tremendous amount of um, opportunity. By 10th grade year, and this is um, the time that students can have that introduction to an advanced placement class like um, AP US History, which you'll hear the students often call a push um, if they come home with that, as well as uh, AP Biology. Ten, uh, by the culminating year of MYP, we've gone through grades five through grades 10 is the culmination of learning, which is in the personal project. 
This is an individual project and you'll see these are the pictures um, from some of the past work, obviously prior to the pandemic uh, that students have done. And as I hope, just like I know Molly and, and John hope with the personal project as we end, um, that we can get back to where we can see these projects in person again, because um, each year, whether it be at being and not having an opportunity to see exhibition or community project or personal project, listening to students present their work and share their work is one of the most rewarding, exciting pieces um, this time of year. And I truly have missed that opportunity. Um, so hopefully we are back um, at it next year um, in a way that we can all participate, uh, whether it be in person or virtual, but in lots of positive ways. Thank you, Addie, for taking us up our tree trunk. And you'll notice in the analogy, we're starting to now branch out. You saw expansive options beginning really in that eighth and ninth and 10th grade. But if you thought that your child had a lot of options, just you wait until we start looking at their last two years of high school. By this time in your child's educational experience, by and large, they've completed many of their state of Ohio graduation requirements. And now the full force of our academic planning guide opens up before them. We have some special programs that we would like to highlight here, but keep in mind that your young person is welcome to experience a mixture of all that we will describe here. Uh, as the IB Diploma Program Coordinator, I would certainly uh, testify to how ex excellent of an experience uh, the IB DP experience is. Uh, this is a cohort model experience where young people come together in sort of an academic family and experience a very highly rigorous, challenging, but gosh, is it a lot of fun, last two years of high school. They experience a range of classes from each of the subject areas, as well as theory of knowledge, which is a very special IB class focused on critical and creative thinking, building arguments, and probably most importantly, assessing our biases and thinking about our place in the world. I cannot speak enough about the IB program, and I'd invite you to check out the website to find out more on that. Another opportunity that our 11th and 12th graders have uh, is through our Heights Consortium called our Career Technical Education Program. We're very excited uh, that this year was the first time in history that Shaker had a career technical class on our campus. Uh, that was through the hard work of Dr. Morensic, our science department chair, partnering with the Shaker Foundation to make sure that our young people had an opportunity to develop with a career in mind on our campus. And therefore, we've got the manufacturing program. It's our first one. Through the Heights Consortium, there are many, many more. Everything from music engineering to cosmetology and auto mechanics instruction. The Heights Consortium, which is through Cleveland Heights University Heights and Garfield Heights and some others, we are, or our kids have opportunity to explore a lot of vocations uh, through that experience. That's about half their day, junior, senior year. And then they take the rest of their classes like English or math on the Shaker campus as well. Um, College Credit Plus is a newer initiative from the state of Ohio where young people can actually get both college credit and high school credit at the same time with one college credit class. Uh, we have a few on campus, but many more through our partners at places like Tri-C or Kenyon or even Little Hiram College has a few opportunities for our kids. And while most of our learners will take some of these College Credit Plus options in 11th and 12th grade, that's actually an opportunity that ranges all the way down to our 7th graders. They can start thinking about these college opportunities there. The Ivy Diploma Program, CTE programs, as well as the College Credit Plus are three great opportunities for our kids. But if your child is passionate just about taking a big, broad variety mix of classes, 
I invite you to look at our academic planning guide uh, on the shaker.org website where you will see an incredible amount of classes. It's truly like a collegiate experience for our youth. Many, many IB, AP, or college-bound classes, and then just some amazing passion projects by some of our faculty. Things like film as art and playwriting, classes that you really will not find at other high schools. I added that last one as a joke, but when you look at our program planning guide, you'd probably think something like that. You might be able to find it in the science section of the guide. So moral of the story is at the high school, you have many opportunities, whether that's through focusing on a specific program or just enjoying a wide range from the full menu of courses we might offer. Which one's mine? Right that sort of brings us to the top of the tree where we find many of our young people choosing and specifying, really personalizing their educational experience. They've reached the apex of that tree, shining in the sun, and they're ready to take on our global world. With that sort of bird's eye view of our pre-K through 12 experience, you may have some questions and we'd be awfully glad to uh, share our insights with you now or follow up and find someone who might be able to give you uh, some more answers at a later time. I wanna thank again my colleagues tonight, uh, Kristen, Denise, Addy. We appreciate your expertise. With that out of the way, uh, we open it up to you, our guests, for any questions you might have. Hello, this is Marty Bach. I'm of a uh, student at Boulevard, student at Woodbury. Uh, can you hear me okay? All right. Um, I have a question. Will the pre-algebra course be continue to be offered at Woodbury to sixth graders next year? Yes, it will. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Well, folks, we are so appreciative of your time. I feel like I'm teaching high school. This is really, it's kind of uh, a little nostalgic here. Marty, thanks for asking our first question. We really appreciate that. Folks, if you don't want to come off uh, mute, you're welcome to put it in the uh, chat. We're happy to stay around for a little bit longer. Uh, otherwise, we appreciate your time and, of course, your support of our Shaker Schools. Let us know what questions you might have either tonight or in the future. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us here this evening. And I just want to thank you, Dr. Moore and Addie and Denise and Kristen for the work that you did putting this together so that everyone can see a nice picture of this vertical progression for their students. The trajectory of their learning throughout their education at Shaker is indeed impressive. So when you think about a world-class education and um, experiences for all, I think I just viewed it. So thank you all for the excellent work that you've done. Thank you. Mr. Florence, I just realized this is probably the last PTO meeting that you will be hosting, and that's probably bittersweet for you. 
So congratulations. Uh, it, is, uh, it is absolutely bittersweet. Um, mm -hmm. You know what? You know what's great? It, it's great, first of all, to work with people like yourself uh, and Dr. Moore and Kristen and Denise and Addie. Addie, we, we worked together back at the middle school. Uh, just amazing. Um, I saw Dr. Herbrook on here earlier. And it's also amazing to work with just fantastic parents. I mean, I think we have great parents here in, in Shaker Heights. Um, you know, uh, sometimes demanding, but very supportive, which is just awesome. So it is bittersweet. It's been a fantastic ride. Um, but I am excited about uh, what uh, lies ahead. And I'm looking forward to the next journey as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone.